now we will do a lab on the stm 32 u 0 low powers. So this is one of the, the main feature of the stm 32 u 0 to be ultra low power. So we look at, you know, some of the low power modes and some of the tools that we offer also for simulation. The objective of this lab is to look at the ultra low power features of the stm 32 u 0 So we'll use different low power modes. In this lab, in particular, we will look at the run mode. And so the application is going to be uh, in run mode for one second. And then we will enter the stop to mode for five seconds. And we will wake up with the RTC. So after five seconds. And then the, so basically it's a loop, you know, while loop, infinite loop. We'll go back to run mode for one second, enter stop to again, wake up with the RTC, and so on, and so on. Uh, last, we'll look at the PCC, which is our uh, power consumption simulator. So this is a tool that is embedded inside the SM32 Cube ID, and which is really good to give you an estimate about your power consumption of your application. Like we did before, we're going to start by creating a new project for the STM32. So this is, you know, the way we do. So we're going to keep, you know, the same workshop as we did before. So you're still going to be in the STM32 U0 workshop uh, workspace. And uh, so, yeah, let's create a new project. All right. So as before, file, new STM32 project. A little reminder, we will be using the STM32 U083MC T6. Okay, so part number, we're going to enter the STM32 U083MC T6. Then select it and press next. Now it's time to give a name to your project. So we can call it uh, low power, for example, and then click finish. This is loading the IOC file right now. After a couple of seconds, the IOC file is loaded. So if it takes a little bit more time on your side, please pause the video. So we're going to use a LED, so the blue LED on your discovery kit to indicate which mode we are in. So we're going to be in run mode or stop mode. So this will be indicated by the LED, so on or off. So to do this, we're going to enable, you know, PA5 as a GPIO output in order to drive it high or low. Okay, so let's look for PA5. Right here, remember this magnifier right here, very useful. And then left click, select GPIO output. And this is it. So now we can configure and control the LED on your board. So as a reminder, we want to use the RTC, so the real time clock, to wake up the microcontroller every five seconds when, you know, after entering uh, stop two. So on the board, we have a crystal. So 32 kilohertz crystal that is connected to the uh, STM32U0. So we're going to use this. So basically going to enable the LSE. So that's the low speed clock and configure it as a crystal or ceramic resonator mode. And this will basically clock the RTC. So very with a high precision. So you have also the choice to use the internal, uh, low speed uh, uh, internal, so LSI. So, but this is less precise than using the LSE. And because on the board we have, you know, a crystal, external crystal for that. So let's use it. So in the pinout configuration tab, go and expand and click on system core, go to RCC. So this is for the clocks. Look for the LSE. So this is the low speed clock right here. 
and we're going to select the crystal and ceramic resonator mode. So now we have the two pins where the crystal is connected, so which is PC14 and PC15, which are also RCC OSC32 in and OSC32 out. Next step is going to be to enable and configure the RTC, so the real-time clock that we'll be using. You will find it under the timers, select RTC, we'll activate the clock source, and we'll also select the wake-up, so with internal wake-up. Now go to timers, select the RTC right here, activate the clock, so the clock source, and then we'll use the wake up with internal wake up. We will then move to the clock configuration tab. In here, we're going to select the clock source for the RTC. So by default, I think it's going to be LSI. We just need to select LSE instead of LSI. And that will clock the RTC. Click on clock configuration tab right here and this is the section that we are interested in right here with the LSC so you see by default the LSI was selected to clock the RTC and the only thing we have to do is to click the LSC right there on the source box and this is it so now we are clocking the RTC from the LSC which is the external crystal at 32 kilohertz now we're going to continue with the RTC configuration. So first, I will present you or explain you the different values that we're going to configure inside the RTC. So let's get started on that. Here is the wake up counter calculation. We want to have a wake up every five seconds. So to do this, the wake up counter should be 10,246. And here is how we arrive at this value. For our calculation, we'll use for the RTC clock a prescaler of 16. So then we'll use the RTC clock divided by 16. Because of that, the wake up time base will be the RTC prescaler divided by the LSE clock. So basically, 16 divided by 32 kilohertz, which is equal to 0 0.488 milliseconds. The wake-up time equal the wake-up time base multiplied by the wake-up counter. So we have this value, we calculated it right here before. So now if we calculate the wake-up counter, the wake up counter equal the wake up time, which is five seconds, divided by the wake up time base, which is 0 0.488 milliseconds, which is equal to 10,246. So those are the two values that we're going to configure inside the RTC. This, so with a prescaler of 16, and then this value, which is the wake up counter, with 10,246 count. So we'll go back to the pinout configuration tab under timers, RTC. This time we'll look at the configuration. We'll start with the parameter settings right here. So click on this one. And then, so those are the values that we're going to configure. The RTC divided by 16 and the value of the wake up counter of 10,246. All right, pinout configuration tab. So we should be, you know, in the RTC, but go to the parameter settings right there. So I'm going to expand a little bit. So the RTC uh, is already uh, selected with the divided by 16. So nothing to change here. And here we said 10,246. Now we can enable the interrupt. So you go into the NVIC settings of the RTC 
and will enable this interrupt. So the RTC interrupt. See, so you have the proper values now configured for your wake up. We go to the NVC settings and enable the interrupt. We can now generate the code using the icon of the gear or project generate code. If you like also the shortcuts, you can click on Alt plus K on your keyboard. Then you will have you know, a perspective change. So it will ask you to change to the C and C++ perspective. Please click yes. Okay, we'll generate our project. So actually I want to show you another method. So you just need to click on save and that will actually ask you if you want to generate your project. Yes. And uh, you want to change perspective. Yes. Now we can add some code. So there is a little bit of code to be added for our application. So let's start from the beginning. So we'll add the code inside main.c in the main function in the while loop. All right. So remember, we'll add it also in this code section. So to preserve the code, uh, if you regenerate, for example, in the future. So this is how you preserve your code. You use, you know, like you add your code within this user code sections. All right. So what do we do here? We are in run mode for one second. So what we do is we turn on the LED and then wait for one second and turn it off. So this is our run mode. Now we need to enter stop to mode. So we we'll prepare the entering of stop to mode. First, we'll suspend the tick. So this is the first step. Then we'll configure you know, the wake up uh, timer for the RTC. So this is done through these functions right there. And then we'll actually enter the stop to mode. So this is the function that we use from our HAL library. Uh, the parameter here will be uh, WFI for white wait for interrupt. So this is also why we enable the interrupt for the RTC. When we wake up from the stop to mode with the RTC, so after five seconds, we are going to resume the ticks first, and then we're going to reconfigure the system clock. Okay, so remember this file. So this is where you find, you know, the code to be added. So you refer to the low power, you know, uh, section of your uh, lab. And uh, so here is a code we want to add. So I'm going just to take this. So, you know, we could also, of course, uh, add it manually, but, you know, to save some time, let's copy and paste it. So copy. Okay, scroll down go to your main function scroll down to the while loop and this is the code we're going to be adding right here okay we finished adding the code we can now build the code in order to build the code you know select of course make sure it's a low power project that has been selected and then click on this icon right here the hammer this will compile and link your code, your project. After a couple of seconds, we have our code that built. Zero errors, zero warnings. So that's always good to see. And now we can move on and we can enter the debug session. So remember, you're going to find, okay, this time actually, we're not going to do the debug. We're going to load the code only. So we're only going to flash. So to flash it, you see there is an icon right there called run. So instead, before we're using you know, the debug, but here we're going to use this one, the run. And this will only flash, you know, the binary. Make sure your board is connected to your host machine. If it's not the case, connected it. Remember, you need to have the connector, uh, the, which is a CN1, right? Where the ST link is connected, connected to your host machine. Now it's connected. We can flash the code. So click on this icon right there. 
All right. OK. It's flashing right now. And it has been downloaded properly. So this is successful. So this is how it works. If you look at you know, the operation of the application on your board, this is how it operates. So it's indicated by the state of the blue LED. When the blue LED is on, that means the SM32 U0 is in run mode. And when the blue LED is off, that means we are in a stop to mode. And we wake up periodically every five seconds. And because we're in a while loop, so then we go back, we execute the same steps, which is first run mode for one second and stop to mode for five seconds.